Okay, so this I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, one thing I'm gonna say is I got a couple video or a few videos in here. I want to make it clear that we do not have a videographer on staff, and every video in here was because we got the resources someone outside that did it for free. So don't look at this and say, we can't do that because, because you can. You need to ask people for their help. Um, we, the city of Charlottesville had a public access TV station and early on they wanted to get more people to, to start look, watching their TV station. So they offered us to do a half hour show called Whispers and Tales. That was what our newsletter was. And they gave us all the production people and this was um, a segment that we did on our foster care, and now we use it on our website constantly, every year, year after year, and we actually give it to other organizations and tell them to slap their logo on the back and use it to recruit in your area. Oh, hi. I was just telling my friend here how I'd love to take her home, but I'm not quite sure I can accept that type of responsibility. What's that? Foster care program, that's a great idea. That's me and a family is doing just that. Hey, the Moore family it was an easy decision to open up their home to animals without a home. I think that's what makes fostering easy is because if you can't do it, fine, you know, they'll call you back. And, and if you can, they're very grateful. The family started fostering animals after the death of the family dog. Heidi Morris thought it would be a good tribute to his memory. After my dog died, um, the kids were begging for a puppy or a kitten, and um, I wasn't ready to catch the ones we traveled a lot for the kitchen. And this way you can say yes or no when you want to foster, and they stay little for, for a long time, too. Once <laughs> they get big, you get the back and you get a new set. They foster both dogs and cats. The family says there is a difference in care. Dogs require a little bit more, I would say, time and... Um, Training, I would say. Uh, the kittens come and they know how to use the litter box for the most part. Um, so it's not as much of a mess necessarily. For several kids in the household, fostering duties often become a family affair. I ask them to clean the litter box. Obviously, they go to school, so they can't do it full time. Um, and then whenever they see food or water empty, I ask them to do it. But mostly, I feel like the kittens need to be socialized. And so I feel like a big part of what they're doing is playing with the kittens and socializing them. Even though to them it's not work, it's still necessary and it's still something I can't always do and it's very helpful. But it's not all fun and games for kids. They want you to know it's sometimes hard work. Okay, you have to clean their litter box and then clean wires and stuff, but they're still a lot of fun. I think um, makes them, you know, sensitive to others' needs and um, responsible for things that need to be done and something they can also enjoy and, and get benefits from as well. So. And even though it is tempting to want to offer a permanent home for every animal they care for, the Morrisons have kept the door open to only one lucky dog. Three legged bundle of love named Cody, but they say they wouldn't have had it any other way. He was the hardest one for me personally to get back. I think it's probably the only one I cried giving him back. I mean, people say, Oh, that was so wonderful of you to do that. And I think, I didn't do anything. I think he's given us so much love and he's so easy and he's so wonderful. And I think we are the ones that benefited. And the SPCA hopes that the process can be a learning experience for the whole family. It's not as hard as you might think. It's very rewarding. The kids absolutely enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's fun. I recommend it. Okay, so how could you not want to foster after seeing that, right? Did you see when that kid went on the bus? She said this kitty's going to be a smart kitty. You've got the whole family involved and everything. We get more mileage out of that video. You, if you go on our website, um, probably in another month or month and a half, around right when the kittens start coming in, you will see that on our website. You will see that on our Facebook page. We will be using that constantly to continue marketing for foster homes. Um, so once you get foster homes, so yeah, I move on to the next step and. And that's really customer service. Because yes, we won't get them adopted if every time someone walks in our door, we're not nice to them, or we're judgmental, or we have this hurdle up here that you have to pass before you can adopt. 
I think it's always interesting to me personally, the organizations that have the highest hurdle for adoption are often the organizations that are also euthanizing a lot of animals. And I'm thinking to myself, don't adopt the animal, euthanize the animal. Really? I mean, does it matter if it has a fenced in backyard? Does every animal need a fenced in backyard? Has anyone in here been denied adoption? I have. Just recently, too. It was in, it was within the last year. I was denied adoption. Um, hate to do this to the pit bull rescue group here. I was denied adoption by a pit bull rescue group. Not. <laughs> Now, I've had pit bulls all my life, but I wasn't good enough for them. Um, I had too many animals. I have six dogs now. I have two pit bulls, two child mixes, and two semi-feral collie mixes. So, and, and at the time, I had five. Because, of course, we assume, instead of just finding out information about them, I, listen, I agree, not, every, not everyone should have six dogs and two of them pit bulls. I totally give them that. But have a conversation first. Have a conversation. That was, I wasn't even, no, I, that was not going to happen. So I'm going to take questions at the end because I want to keep it moving if I can and I'll come back to you at the end if you don't mind. Um, so customer service. Incredibly, incredibly important that we not be judgmental. And I think this is the same even if you're a rescue group with foster homes. Because if you're only adopting out 10 a year because you need someone to walk on water, um, and there's, I guess, I, there's really more animals dying at your local pound, and you could help. So everyone, this, this is, I'm not saying this is about beat up your local shelter. That's not what this is about. This is about everyone taking responsibility and taking these in and doing this. After you improve your customer service, and you have to do that first because you don't want people to come in and be miserable, then you want to do a lot of marketing to get people in the door. And marketing is everything. It's not just, you don't, oh, we don't have enough money to spend for a TV ad. We can't because. Flyers, blogs, now these days with social media. Um, Domino's Pizza, I heard this 10 years ago at a best friends conference. Domino's Pizza will put your flyers on their pizza boxes. In our community, they deliver 2,000 pizzas a week. We, if we give them the flyers, they slap their fly, our flyer on their pizza box, and that's, our, that's a way to get our word out. So I think everyone should take advantage of that. Um, we Twitter, we tweet, and we've actually had news stations come to us because they saw, saw something that we tweeted about a story and they came in and did a story. So you want to do everything. In addition, I mean, I don't, it seems really dark, but we have all sorts of adoption events. We want to do everything that we can to encourage people to come inside our facility. Um, and by the way, just on that sort of the positive, we want to keep everything positive, we actually don't use the term shelter at all in anything that we do. Because I think shelter, for some reason over the years, has had a, uh, a negative con connotation. You think of the old dismal building like we actually had. So we always talk about our facility, our organization. I know some places use the term campus. But you know, just really try to keep get people into your facility. Um, you know, Every holiday, use it. And it really doesn't take a lot. So if you, if you think, like we decorate for Christmas every year. You're like, well, we just can't get the decorations to run over. I mean, have Christmas in July and, and borrow decorations. There's a lot of people do these Christmas in July parties. Have one of those then and just borrow the, the stuff. We have our staff dress up a lot. So a lot of times when we have parties, we have the cat's pajama party um, and staff dressed up in pajamas. And it, you know, when we came up with little thing, dress up things and uh, we had a local beautician that came in and did free haircuts. If you can get a face painter, I guarantee you the families will come in. So do things to bring people in, because the more you bring them in, the more they're going to go out and tell people about it. But we also do a series of adoption adoption specials, and we do it through flyers, press releases, and everything, and these are just some of ours. Um, back to school special. Winter Olympics, every time the US won a medal, we discounted adoption fees. 
people were following what the U.S. was doing and coming in and even putting on our Facebook. So what's the adoption of Day? You want to get that engagement back and forth. It doesn't, this is a good example, it doesn't have, this is a Word document, um, oldies but goodies and your pets still rock between naps. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy to get your point out. It's the Mad Cat or Tea Party. We did this, of course, when Alice in Wonderland came out. We partnered with the local theater showing it. Anyone that brought in their movie ticket stub got a free adoption. Um, not only that, and then, and then we had the Mad Cat or Tea Party, so we had a face painter, all the staff dressed up. I have no ego, pride, shame when it comes to increasing the adoptions on the Mad Cat or in there. So I will do anything to increase adoptions. All that stuff came, we actually have a thrift store, and if you don't have a thrift store, I encourage you to look into it from a fundraising standpoint. Our thrift store nets over $250,000 a year. So I encourage you to look into it. People love to donate to a thrift store. Desperate house cats. I gotta say we stole that from the Nevada Humane Society, so I gotta give them credit. Um, this, we have a lot of hound dogs in Virginia, so this was an Elvis hound special. They were twelve ninety five. This twelve ninety five is what Elvis paid for his first guitar. We partnered with a local Pepsi distributor. They gave us free Pepsi to hand out a case of Pepsi to anyone adopted a hound because Pepsi was Elvis's favorite drink. And of course, we did a press release, put all these things in there, and the media came out, and of course, they filmed it too. Filmed the Pepsi coming in. Um, you know, the hound dog thing wasn't enough. This is just, you just want to keep, that's why I say don't let these hurdles get, you've got to keep overcoming the hurdles. We still weren't getting enough hounds adopted because people think they're all hunting dogs, they can't make good pets. We had one of our well-known local reporters come in. We did the press release story and he sort of took off on it, but it was, you know, it went along the lines of, you know, the, the hounds at the SPCA are hunting dog dropouts. They were failures. They're only, the only thing they're hunting for is a spot on a couch. Um, and he did a great story on it. So you just gotta keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, this, I, this is just, we have um, one, there's a weekly paper and then one of the people that works at the weekly paper loves the SPCA, so anytime they don't fill their ad spots, she just sticks, she, she does this, she comes and does pictures and does a wanted poster and these would be our like top 10 pets that have been there the longest. This was a senior hound, that's the last thing you want to be in our facility. We have so many hounds, you don't want to be a senior. Um, and Stan did get adopted, but sometimes if they're like having a bad, you know, week as far as advertising, I'll see three of these in our paper, and we don't pay at all for it. And it's one of the weekly papers. It's very, it's picked up a lot, and we don't actually even design this. We do nothing. We just sit there and say, take pictures of our animals. Um, this was our heavyweight cat special. <laughs> all cats, ten pounds or more, were ten dollars. Pit stop special. NASCAR is big, and I'll tell you, it's interesting. We got a lot of feedback from people. We can't believe you're giving away the animals at five dollars. We have the same adoption procedures for pit bulls, whether it's full price or on special. And we still, and for pit bulls, we do home visits. So, and this adoption special was so incredibly successful that right after this, we swapped with another shelter. We had too many hounds. We actually only had three pit bulls left, so we took in pit bulls and gave them hats because we needed more pit bulls up. Um, and here's, now this is where video, again, we did do this video, I'm going to show you another video. This, it wasn't like this was on TV, but it was on Facebook and everything and people would pass it along. If you put it on there, the great thing with Facebook, you put a nice video on there and everyone shares it with everyone and then everyone gets to know about it. So here's a video about our pit stop special. Hello, this is Montreal. This is one of the many Thing to have a dog so you can get a lot of exercise while you're standing there. <laughs> 
running up the stairs with a jacket on. So in the first corner. It was really cute. Um, if you're not on Facebook, shame on you. Um, it took me a while to get over the hurdle, but if, you're, or if you have an organization, you should have a Facebook page. And why it's so great is it's interactive. Um, and so it encourages people to become part of your organization. This is interesting, and this, this I use as an, as an example of people coming up with solutions and not excuses. Uh, when we first started putting all our cats and kittens into foster home, and, and we had a lot of them, we could have, we could, we could have it at one time in the summer, you know, 400, 500 cats and kittens in foster homes. And where are we going to put them when they come back? Um, and so I had a board member that was a cat lover, and she kept coming in my office and going, what are we going to do about the cats? I'm like, okay, remember the solutions, not complaints and everything? You know, you need to go go, go do something, and then tell me what you're going to go do about the cats. Um, so she went out to a realtor in the area that had vacant space and said, could we just put up a retail, um, put cats in your retail space? It's not being rented. Just use it temporarily to adopt out cats. And everyone said no. But again, don't don't take those hurdles there. Everyone said no, so she went to someone's office and he said, so, you know, hi, I'm Jan. I said, didn't I just talk to you? She goes, yes, she did. And she goes, and I didn't like your answer. I'm wondering if you'll say no if I cry in front of you face to face. <laughs> Got the space, year and a half we rent. We didn't pay anything. It was all volunteer run for a while. It was incredibly successful. We now actually have the space. We now do pay rent, but we had another volunteer who is a donor, and she pays the rent for us. So these things sort of take on a life of, of your own, of their own, if you just get them going. And at the end of the day, what you want to create is a place where people have a good time coming. It's an animal fun center. You know, you shouldn't have all these policies of don't touch the animals. I and mean, then people are just depressed. They come into your organization, they see them behind pages, they don't feel like they can do anything. Even if someone's not in the market to adopt, but you know, if you're doing good with your cleaning and everything like that, them playing with your kids, playing with kittens, maybe that family's not ready to adopt, but they tell their friends, you know, or maybe they're not ready. Just open it up. You want people to love you and to always want to come back and to be your person that's marketing out in the community. The more people that are coming in, the more the word's getting out there. Because at the end of the day, you can increase adoptions and you can do it huge. And it does bring down your euthanasia rate. And I hate when I hear the idea that we can't adopt our way to no kill. I hate that. Because you can and you should. This is the way you're going to get there quickly. It didn't take us five years because we reduced intake over that time. It took us like a year and a half, two years. So you can and you should, and if you're not doing some of these things, you need to go out there and try. I also hate the thing that we hear a lot in animal welfare is it's just too many animals and not enough homes. Go on Maddie's Fund's website, the stats are there, there's 60 million households that have animals, and I think these days they say about 20 to 25 percent of them are getting them from animal shelters. There are homes out there. We only need to capture 5% more. We don't need to go from 20, 25% to 100% of households making sure they get from animal shelters, but just 5% more. And we won't be euthanizing animals. So we need to make sure that people are coming to us. But really, adopting your way to no kill is a very quick way to get there. And this is, you know, everyone should be embracing these and working together, rescue groups, SPCAs, pounds, together to do this. Now, to get to 90%, I think it's also helpful to have some good medical care. 
Um, but again, this is, this is, I think, what gets you from the 80, 85% to the 90%. And this is, you, you look at sort of, this is where you're gonna put a lot of your resources to capture that small percentage. So you wanna do all the other stuff first, the foster homes, the adoptions, the easy stuff. Um, and then of course, you know, on the medical, medical care side, there's, there's easy stuff just like antibiotics, but then there's more difficult things, like when the puppy comes in, can you even see, it's, I know it's dark, real, he's real skinny, um, we tested him for parvo, everything, nothing, couldn't figure out what was wrong, kept throwing up. And down here, if you can see, it has a stick like this that was lodged from his esophagus down, and that's why he couldn't keep anything down, so that's why he needed medical care. Then he went into a foster home, and then he got adopted.